Hello and welcome to Sustainable Action here on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. I want to welcome our listeners today. We have a first Friday extravaganza going on with our shows today. And I'd like to inter- have our first guest introduce our se- herself, man, that's, that's a mouthful, to our listeners. So I'm asking you to introduce yourself. Okay. I know it was really rough. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, my name is Addie Hirschen. I am a local painter here in Indianapolis. That means that I create paintings that are um, they range anywhere from like, impressionist traditional oil paintings to very abstract um, things that are about expressing our inner emotions. Uh, it just depends on my mood, but um, but I have a studio that's very close here that I bet we're going to talk about, and um, and I teach classes within that space. So we are currently located right now. We're um, on the near east side, um, across from the Bonner Center for people who are Indianapolis centric, mm. and your studio is in between here. And downtown, so yes. you're even closer to downtown Indianapolis. Yes, yeah. So we're pretty close to Mass Ave in the Cottage Home Historic District, and uh, my studio is called Studio Alchemy. Um, so if you Google that, you will you will pop right up. Um, I can verify yes. that. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you you can actually do Alchemy Indianapolis and you are one of the options that are available. Awesome. So, Very good. okay listeners, you're out there. If you're listening to us now, you've gone to audiorealm.com, you typed in Cozy with a Z into the search engine, and you press the listen icon. So tell your friends because we have Addie here who has an art studio in Cottage Home neighborhood, which is just, just east of the north-south split of the mm-hmm. interstate interstate system here in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. So, all sorts of art um, when it comes to paintbrush. Is, is there other areas that you do as well? Do you use mixed media in your painting? I do occasionally, yeah. Yeah, I love doing vision board things where I take collage, um, old magazines, old photographs, um, and sometimes I'm incorporating them into painting where if you use certain methods um, you can cover those magazine images with um, certain materials like Mod Podge and then you can keep painting right on top of it. So I love doing that and occasionally teach classes on that. Um, and I also do vision boards where I'll create a vision um, of what I want to do in the coming year. It's something I do every New Year's. New Year's is coming up. Um, and I do workshops on that. But most of my things that I do are painting, because um, that's my love. That's what I love. <laughs> where did you learn how to paint? Where did I learn how to paint? Um, I got a, um, a bachelor's degree in art in at Appalachian State University, which is in Boone, North Carolina, way up in the mountains. It's a beautiful place, so it was a nice spot to uh, learn how to paint. Um, yeah. I bet you're really good at landscapes. Yeah, they, they're... <laughs> One You've had my, a lot of practice. One at of least. my joys, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, what brought you to Indianapolis? What brought me to Indianapolis? Well, uh, that's, that's a long story, <laughs> but we've got an hour, so. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, so I came here originally because um, my partner got a job here, as oftentimes happens, and I. I had majored in art in college, but um, after that, art really became my hobby for a while. And um, I focused instead on being a librarian. I even have a Master of Library Science. Um, and so, when we, but when we moved here to Indianapolis, uh, the, there was, they were not hiring librarians, they were firing librarians. This was the year they fired 60 employees um, because of budget. Um, restraints. And so I was able to get, miraculously, a part-time job at one of the libraries here. Um, I was one of 600 applicants. It gives you an idea of how um, how flooded uh, we were in that uh, job industry 
um, with people who needed the jobs. Um, and, and so I got a part-time job, which was miraculous, as I said, but then I also started teaching with the Indianapolis Art Center. And, um, and then fell in love with teaching art, with doing the research for gathering the materials, for helping guide other artists to figure out what they want to say through their artwork. Um, and because I was so inspired by the classes that I was teaching, I started painting more and more and more and more. Um, and the rest is history, I suppose. Um, at this point, I have a, my own studio space where I teach the classes and um, continue learning from my students um, as well as um, from all the research I do to gather everything for those classes. And I am imagining because the, um, the Indianapolis Art Center, you, it's, you didn't stop teaching there because it was um, not a good place. You, you started your own studio because you wanted freedom to teach what you wanted to teach. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a matter, too, of also having my studio and the classroom within the same space so that I, you know, I'm, I'm working on my own projects and every time my students or um, sometimes I don't even want to call them my students because they're more my friends. <laughs> they're my community who come in and, and they are doing their things. They come in to do their projects and then they see what I'm doing. Whereas before there was this disconnect. The studio was on the in my house and, and the classroom wasn't and now the classroom and the studio are one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a different feeling. And it, it broadens your ability to convey what you mean when you say such and such, yes. and like, um, you know, really dig deep into that feeling and express it, and they can look at your work and find expressions of those feelings. Sure, definitely, definitely. Um, I can point to my own pieces as examples, but I do want to say that I, I always strive when I am teaching to help people figure out what they want to say for themselves and not just copy me. And there's tons of classes out there where it's we're all doing the exact same well, thing. We, we've seen them in the movies. You got yeah, you got yeah. someone or something um, in the front of the room or the center right. of the room, and you have all the easels and all the students around it, and right. everybody is attempting to do that thing. Yes, and and that can be great exercise at the beginning for honing your skills and learning how to do whatever it is that's in your head, but ultimately I think people are drawn to creating artwork because there's something that they want to say, and it's unique to their own experience, and, um, and so we want to draw that out and, and give them an opportunity to um, find their own voice. Do you, are you an oil painter, or what? Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. There's, because um, I know from my experience of going to art galleries that, you know, there's watercolors, there's oil, there's um, other things that I'm not sure what they used. <laughs> Fair question. Fair question. Yes. Um, I work mostly in acrylics and um, sometimes oils. They, they both have their um, pluses and minuses. But for me, I like those too because they're opaque, so I can I can really cover things up. Whereas with watercolor, you, you there's no covering anything. It's just um, you, you can't build. So um, I, with acrylic, you can build, 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 build. Um, you can add um, collage. So when, so when you're um, saying build, mm -hmm. you're like um, saying that. With um, mm -hmm. acrylic or oil, you can put texture. Yes. It's a textured situation. Texture and layers. Textures and layers. Because some of the paintings will have 20 layers to them. Um, and those, that's usually when I'm working in acrylic because it dries so fast. Acrylic dries fast. Ah, um, so that's why okay. acrylics... To, okay, okay. So oil... Um, does the same things, but it's slower to dry? Oh, very slow to dry. Sometimes, um, and it depends on the paint and what's chemically in that paint, but it can take several weeks to dry, which that can be a benefit if you're working and you want to come back 
a few hours later and continue smearing. <laughs> See? Okay. So, um, okay. But whereas with acrylic, you can you put it on and 20 minutes later it's dry, so you can just go right on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it'll, like the layer below will be dry, so it can be uh, brown. And then on your palette, is that the term for yes. the thing that we see the artists holding and dabbing their paint <laughs> yes, in? Yes, yes. The palette. <laughs> so you could add a little white to that brown on your palette and then immediately layer that right on top of yes. that peak of brown that you've put in. Yes. Yes, exactly. Do acrylic paintings last as long as oil paintings? Uh, well, time will tell, won't it? Because, I mean, the, the acrylic products that we're using today were invented, um, gosh, less than 100 years ago. So, um, so far, so good. It's so far, so good. Um, there's a wide variety of um, qualities that you can get. Um, but acrylic paint does tend to be cheaper overall, even for the good quality stuff. So I usually recommend that people start with acrylics because, um, because it's, it dries fast, affordability. And I, I think you have to be called to, be, to do watercolors. Oh, yeah? I, I really think you have to be called to it because the people that I've seen that are really good at it, um, they, they think it's easy. Oh, okay. I find it harder. I, you know, it's a matter of I couldn't do it when I was a kid, so, okay. you know, like, always too wide a brush, always too much water, always something, yeah. always something. Um, but, okay, so we're layering in acrylics. For people who don't know, I, I brought out a, a term, the mixed media. Yes. Let's explain that for people who are like, mixed media? Um, <laughs> we might have lost them for a minute, so let's bring them back in. Okay, okay, sure. So mixed media essentially means um, we can mix and match any form of paint, um, collage materials together and splice it. But there are some general rules that you have to follow. Um, for example, um, I can put acrylic down on the canvas and then I can put oil on top of it of various forms. Um, whether it's oil pastels, which are little sticks like crayons, um, or oil paint. But I can't put the acrylic on top of the oil because it would trap it. And that oil will then, uh, it might mold underneath there, it might force the acrylic to flake off. So we have we do have certain things we have to follow some so the oil, guidelines just to get stuff to stick. <laughs> so the, the oil is alive still. Oh alive. That's one that's an interesting way to put it. But I well, mean if it's because it can it, it can yeah. transfer into other forms of yes. life. If it can mold then then it was alive. Yeah. Yeah, and it, the stuff I'm using is a linseed oil. A lot of people say, oh, well, I don't want to work in oil because um, of the chemicals. So you can use turpentine, which is very smelly and probably bad for your brain. Um, but I only use some of those things if it's outside, and there are benefits to using those on occasion. But I like linseed oil because it is a natural product and it doesn't smell. Um, Not mirrors like turpentine. It does yes, smell. Yes. It does smell. I like but. the smell. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how that works with people, yeah, right? Yeah. If, if it doesn't stink to you, then, then it's not so bad. Then we're all good. <laughs> yeah. So the linseed oil as a thinner or? As a thinner, exactly. To get it to be more fluid as you're putting the paint down. So the collages that you work with, mm -hmm. that's a mixed media. Yes. And so people who maybe this Friday will be the first time they go to an art gallery. In, okay. In Indianapolis, we have a thing that we call First Fridays. Yes. Um, do you participate in First Fridays? Yes, yes. So my studio, Studio Alchemy, um, is open every first Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. And there are a wide variety of other artist studios in town that you can visit at the same time. So a lot of people will make a little tour of it. They'll make an evening of it. Um, they might go to the Circle City Industrial Complex, which is a 
very large um, old factory building that has been slowly converting into artist studios and they're really improving the space. It's really nice in there. When the first time I visited it, it was like uh, industrial. It was very industrial and dark and scary. And now they're adding light, and they're and it's a, a much more pleasant space to work for the artists themselves. Um, yeah, it's amazing yeah. what a little money and a lot of time can do when you yes. have artists involved. Yes, yeah, yeah. So there's very exciting things going on at the Circle City, and there's the Harrison Center. There's the um, Arts Council, which is on Penn. Um, they have a show that I'm going to be part of on Friday as well that's a tiny show. So a bunch of small paintings, they all have to be less than six inches wide and tall. And so a wide variety of artists are going to have um, pieces in that show and it's a, it's a popular so, animal show. And it's a jury show. Yes, yeah, that one is, yeah. Okay, so let's explain to people what it, what it means when they see an advertisement for a juried show. Okay. Uh, a jury show means that um, you, the artist, will submit your artwork to a specific theme, um, and then they will select from the applicants uh, the pieces that will go to become the fleshed out body of the show that will hopefully be coherent and, and flow together as a unit. Um, which can be very time consuming, let me tell you. But, but it's, it's, it can, it's fun to put things like that together. I've done a lot of that in the past. Although right now at my studio, I usually just have my things. Um, but uh, this Friday, I'm going to have um, some other artists that are going to be sharing their work as well. But yeah, a juried show um, can be a fun way to get your foot in the door um, to the art world. Um, yeah. yeah. Because so this is for somebody who, uh, it can be for folks who haven't attracted a gallery to do a big show of their work, but sure. if they have a couple of pieces that they just are really super proud of and by all the criteria that they've ever been trained by, it's good work. So mm -hmm. they can look for, they need to join the Arts Council. Oh yes. Yes. We join the Arts Council if there's any um, artists out there of all the mediums. Yes. You yes. want to join the, the Indianapolis Arts Council. And get on their newsletter list get because they the send newsletter. out a wonderful newsletter. I have several times written to them personally to say I really appreciate them gathering the information for their newsletter because they tell about the upcoming events, the things that we artists can participate in. Um, and what it's the call to invaluable. the call to what is that um, call to entry? Is sure. It, yeah, you might the, call it that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've seen letters to artists where they're say, "Hey, we're." Um, I, I know a sculptor who gets uh, letters every time the Indiana State, uh, the White River, White River State Park is doing their their sculpture change out. Sure. Um, he gets a letter um, reminding him yes. that he ought to submit sketches to this. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so no matter what the median, the um, Indiana Arts Council is a, a good organization to get your foot in, just so you know what's going on in the art community and in, in the Indianapolis area. So you responded to one of those mm -hmm. with a tiny picture or a tiny mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. and it got picked and so the um, the curator of the gallery mm -hmm. is that the right term yes the the curator is who um, what it hangs the show is that um, am, am I saying the right words here yeah I think, yeah yeah you've got it yeah. so we'll get the lingo <laughs> <laughs> that, and, and folks, that's from, from um, a stretch of my life where went to every first Friday for like four years in a row, all, yeah. all over the city to do um, meet really, really interesting people with a different view on life because life is art to artists. Mm. So it's a an interesting group of people to mm -hmm. um, spend time with and talk to them about their work. The neat thing for me about First Fridays is generally 
well, in a, in a show where it's like at, at your studio, at mm -hmm. Studio Alchemy, um, you'll be there. Yes. And the people that you are, have showing with you this Friday, mm -hmm. they'll be there too, won't they? Yes. Yeah. So if you're looking at a piece of work and you know how you feel about it and you know, you know what you think it means, you yeah. actually have the artist available in that space to discuss the work with. Right. Now that's that's just my favorite part of First Fridays oh, is, is getting to connect the artist with the work. Mm -hmm. um, you can never guess what the artist is going to look like by their work. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's one of the things that, that I found interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but artists are a great group of people in, in my personal opinion, I think they're expressing the angst of society and the joy of society. Mm -hmm. so, so we're going to take a moment. This is Sue Spicer with Sustainable Action here on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. If you have a moment this holiday, you need to go down to the Central Library at 40 East St. Clair Street and have a sandwich or a coffee beverage at the Double Cupped Cafe, located on the second floor atrium level during most of the open hours of the library. It brings a wonderful, warm-bellied experience to your reading in the leather chairs on the sixth floor. So go check it out, check out a book, and join us at 40 East St. Clerk Street for the Double Cupped Cafe. Addie, mm -hmm. Studio Alchemy, how did you luck upon such a great location? Because you're like a mile from the circle. Oh, I know. Yeah, I, I hunted for several years <laughs> to find this space. And I was looking for something very specific. It, it, we had a narrow criteria. So um, my partner wanted to walk to his work. Okay. Uh, and he works downtown. And I wanted to have a space that had windows, it had light, um, it was warm and inviting to work in myself and to be able to have my other students and friends come and paint with me. Um, and uh, so, and I, and I had a dog who sadly died a couple weeks ago, but she was a barker, and so I needed to have a space that was not right in the living room, it needed to be a little separate. So, um, this unique property um, is a historic landmark home um, it was the main house was built in 1890 and the whole thing was completely redone by another um, artist with the help of landmark um, her name is Mary Jane Moriarty but she she is a, a potter um, but they uh, com they completely gutted the space and I mean they lifted the house and did all of the uh, the foundation, everything is new except for the exterior uh, wood that's carved and very nice and ornate. And then the back studio space, uh, Mary Jane had it set up as a pottery studio with several kilns. Um, so, so people, but, for the visual, mm -hmm. it is a separate building. It is a separate from, little building from the house, which I had. I wasn't sure how old it was. I had guessed, oh, maybe it was built in the 20s. It turns out, through the renovation that we just did, that that little house is older. It was 1880, 1870, we're not sure. Um, we found one map that shows it uh, 1890, but it, it's certainly older than that according to the way the joists were. So um, the floor in the space was sinking and obviously needed help. We lifted the floor and they, they found all this rot and they had to restructure that whole thing. Um, and if you come by the studio, I can show you the photos <laughs> of, of what it looked like when everything was torn apart. It was spectacular. And um, I had several sleepless nights thinking, if there's a big wind, the whole thing's gonna fall down. But um, they miraculously put it back. Miraculous is my word of the day. I think I've used that three times today. 
And we're going to give them a prize. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> perhaps, I don't know. Perhaps it will be a miraculous yes. night. Yes. So now we have this space where I have a very short commute. I have a beautiful little garden in between. Um, and we have a functional bathroom that we can use and we can we just have a lovely space that um, so we've transformed it and I know that the this title of your show is sustainable right? sustainable yes and and so I did want to talk a little bit about how to transform that space and to select it as a home and a studio for myself it, it's, Part of my motivation was to be more sustainable, both because I and my partner have a shorter commute. We're going to cut back to just one car. Um, and, um, and we were revitalizing a building that, you know, if you'd have let it go and let it go, it would eventually fall in. Yes. You know, it, but rather we are um, maintaining it. And sustainability, I think, uh, is oftentimes a lot about just maintenance and the day-to-day. -day. Sustaining. Yes, sustaining. Yes. Is, is something sustainable? <laughs> is it something that we can, if, if we take care of it, will it last? Yes, yes. Yeah, and <clears throat> the name of my studio, Studio Alchemy, the reason I chose Alchemy as a title, there's, um, it's uh, old medieval scientists called themselves the alchemists in Europe and what they were trying to do was take metals and then transform them maybe to get gold. This yeah, is one of their yeah. ultimate goals is to get gold. Cheap metal but, into real, uh, in, in, right, not cheap metal. Right. So there's, they're trying to mix things together to create something new and special and it's actually any artistry um, and our day-to-day -day lives are always taking materials, putting them together to create something new, whether it's a loaf of bread or um, it's creating different paints, putting them together, and or it's the space that we're living in and transforming it to be the way we want it to be. Um, you saved me a question because oh, I was going to ask, ask you <laughs> how, how you decided on that name. Yeah, yeah. So remind people how they can find you on the interweb. Okay, so uh, our website is studioalchemy.art. Mm -hmm. um, so all one word, studioalchemy.art. Mm -hmm. And do you have a Facebook or Instagram <coughs> or any of those? I do, I have Facebook and I have Instagram, yes. Yeah. And they would just put in stu Studio Alchemy and yes. that will bring that up in their yeah, system sure. as well. Or my name, Addie Hirshton, but Hirshton is a, is a long name, the H-I-R-S-C-H-T-E-N. I have to spell it out every time. So it's easier to just say Studio Alchemy. Yes. <laughs> and I can promise everyone that that comes up um, really well on, on Google. Good, good. So, that's, like I said, I just went Alchemy Indianapolis because, ironically, I hadn't seen Mary Jane Moriarty for a long, long time when it wasn't in front of her house in Cottage Home. And then ran into her Monday at the library um, a few moments really after I'd been told my 10 o'clock guest for this morning was not going to be able to make it today. <laughs> and I asked her what she was doing and, and she said, well, I'm just volunteering here and there. But the gal who bought my house, that's one you should talk to. So I really appreciate you bailing out the show with replacing a last minute reschedule. No um, problem. Happy to be here. And, and First Fridays, I, I hope for Sustainable Action to continue a theme on the Tuesday before Fridays mm -hmm. of highlighting different uh, gallery people. Um, or artists who are showing on First Friday in someone else's gallery yes. um, to help <clears throat> rebuild that momentum on First Fridays because it, it's been big, it's been less, it's working on being big again. So I'd like my show to be a part of that because society is not sustainable without art. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that way. If we don't, if we can't 
find ways to release, release our creativity in positive ways, mm -hmm. we're still going to release that creativity. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. <laughs> yep, yep. A very kind way to say it. <laughs> my, my parents um, moved, I'm, I'm the youngest of six kids, four oh, boys, wow. okay. my sister and then me. Okay. And they moved us out into the middle of the country. Okay. And that is what kept us out of trouble. Okay. That right there, with not being close enough to anything, we had to drive to go to town to get in trouble. To, oh. It, so it, it had to be an effort. So by the time you got there, you could find something else to do. But a household of um, creative board people isn't a recipe f necessarily for good things to happen sure. unless you have the available focus of the other activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. So luckily I was put, pushed towards reading and writing, um, that visual, the photography and that, that type of thing and you can you can lose hours of your life with with a camera out, out in nature. It's you can Okay. <laughs> and the same could be said with a set of paints and a canvas. Yes, yes. And one of the things I love about that focus, if you um, sit in front of nature or sit with yourself, whether it's you're, you're getting the images from within or from the exterior, you're really noticing and you're taking your time to take note of every little leaf, of every twist and turn of the tree, um, in a way that I, I can just glance at a tree. But it's not the same as if I sit and I stare at it for hours, and I really commune with the tree. It's, it's a different feeling and a respect that you get for the things that are around you when you really sit with them. Would you consider it being a, a way to teach you how to be present in a moment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You, you get in the zone. It's, sort of, it's rather like a meditative state. Um, and you, you get in the groove and the focus uh, on that one thing. Yes. So that's why people do it to relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it is one of those things where, uh, you know, if we take realistic drawing, for example. Um, what is realistic drawing? We're trying to draw this cup to look as realistic as possible. Okay. That, so everyone that sees challenge. that it's a cup. So you can tell that it's, it's a, a cup. And it looks like a cup you could drink out of. I, and you can it, give it dimension and form. That is a challenge that not everyone is up for. I get it. But um, if you get in the groove of that, it can be very addictive. Because <laughs> you, you, you are just noticing and just absorbing and transferring it to the paper. And then afterward, we sit back and we reflect, well, why did I want to draw this cup? Why is this cup important? What's the story of this cup? Um, and then, then it can always draw us back to ourselves and to understand ourselves and, and the environment that we live in better. So do you have an age limit on your uh, classes. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, most of my students are adults. Um, <clears throat> last year I did a teen camp, which was great. But uh, ultimately, any of my classes, if you had a mature teen, they could join in as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're talking about anybody who's serious about it. Yeah. You're serious about teaching them. Yes. Yeah. So. So technically, the age limit is a maturity level and a focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can start creating artwork at age 60 or age 15. Um, it's as some people say, it's not the, it's not the years, it's the hours, it's the, it's the sitting there and really working on the craftsmanship of the skill um, that is both fun and how we get to where we want to be, and be, to be able to say what we want to say with it. So, I do stick figures, <laughs> I do, I, I can, if I'm talking yeah. to a person as I'm drawing something, 
Okay. I know I can get them to understand what I'm what I'm trying to convey. Mm -hmm. And if I spent hours at the studio um, learning how to translate that into better form, um, as long as I put in the focus, uh, I will get someplace that I can be happy with. Or is it? <laughs> Am I am I reaching for this weird place out there that who is ever really happy? <laughs> Sue, all right, you're my kind of person. <laughs> Asking the big questions. Yes, um, uh, I have seen moments where someone came into an art class and they'd never done a painting before, and at the end of the class they were really disappointed because they hadn't made a masterpiece. Ah, uh -huh. um, th I do think that there's a myth within art society within our culture that you're either born with artistic talent or you're not and we can just divide people into yes or no they are artistic or they aren't but I disagree I think that everyone has within them the creative spark and it could be directed different ways it could be directed toward cooking it could be directed toward um, cooking is cook another alchemy yes it is an alchemy um, it, it can be directed any number of ways it's your choice of what you want to focus on and get better at um, and it, so it does take dedication to be able to hone the skill, to be able to say what we want to say with it. And that sometimes takes time just to figure out why was I drawn to artwork? What What is it I'm trying to say? I have, um, on one occasion, I had a student who, she had taken a number of classes over the years and all of a sudden she had made this one piece and she said, you know what, this is the piece I was trying to make and now I'm done. And she, and she, and she said, I think I'm going to join the church choir or something like that. I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's not me, because for me it's, it's just, I don't know that I'll ever want to stop. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there'll come a point where I feel like I've said everything I need to say. But um, uh, there is never a, a one goal, or there usually isn't, like this person that did, she, they just had one that's, piece that's that was the, very special that was honing everything they wanted. Um, and then you could say finished, done. I, I can but, honestly say that is the very first time I have ever heard that. Yeah, yeah, it, it blew me away, and I had to think about it for a couple of days. Will I ever have my final piece? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think this is a unique individual. Yeah, maybe. and and maybe she'll find that in a few decades, uh, she might find herself. Oh yes, yes, because. You know, when I was in college, I, I painted eight hours a day. I painted all the time, and I, it was very abstract expressions, just churning up all these colors with the emotions and getting them out. Um, and then I, because I became a librarian, I didn't spend yeah, as job. much time doing the artwork, and so um, I had all this, and I and I had a child, so <laughs> I you know, all these things happened in my life, and then suddenly I had this itching, like I have to. I have to get this out, um, uh, otherwise I'll explode. Or, uh, well, how did you say that earlier? Your creativity will come out in an interesting way. So, um, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, some people it call can... it passive aggressive. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of forms yes. of creativity coming out in negative ways. Sure. There's lots of forms yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of, one of the problem with the youth today is they don't have enough options in how to express their creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a firm believer of that. Yeah. Just I'm pretty mad at how we've let down like generations of kids with our education system by mm -hmm. not funding it, by cutting. To cut the arts is to cut your nose off your face. Mm. I mean, you look at band, um, there's nobody in band who flunks fractions. Mm. They just don't. You don't, if you, if you can play a musical instrument, you can read music, you, the concept of fractions has been indelibly etched upon you. Sure, yeah. <laughs> because for those of you who don't read music, it's basically fractions. <laughs> It's eighths, it's sixteenths, it's mm -hmm. all the notes have 
their designations are a fraction of a whole measure. Mm -hmm. So if you learn how to read music, you learn fractions. Right. And if we learn how to, um, how to take control of a situation and we, we have a project and we're going to take it through step one, step two, step three, step four, done. That is a skill. Learning process. That, um, that is part of what's important in an art education. Is, is learning how to see the process uh, and to be able to bring a project to completion and to do it with confidence. That is a life skill. It is. Because basically what you're saying is through, through painting, you can learn how to look at the situation, mm -hmm. to pick out the process, to um, develop the process on how this project can be completed, whether it's a painting or whether it's um, redoing your backyard. Mm -hmm. And it's a process and you have, you teaches you to think about it and to know that, well, like in your backyard, you might need to, if you want this kind of tree, you're going to have to take that bush out. But it teaches you to investigate the situation, and it teaches you to be mindful of the order that you do things. Yes. And to be particular about your materials mm -hmm. in order to get the ending, the result that you see in your head. So, see, art teaches people. We the, the the fact that we don't that there are people who want to take the money and have taken the money mm -hmm. out of the programs in our high schools and elementary schools that uh, make art seem like a frivolous thing. I worry for the, for the people who make those decisions mm -hmm. because I feel like their life isn't as full as it might be. If, if they don't have a connection to art, then what are they connected to? So you help people find connections to themselves and learn how to express it on a canvas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you teach... Um, <clears throat> I, would, I would assume you teach mixed media when a, if a person asks you about it, but in general, um, say, it's a beginning class, and we walk in. Do we need uh, to bring our own paints and canvas and brushes, or do you have a kit that we buy when we come in? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do sometimes do afternoon workshops where I provide you with every all the materials. Like for example, our upcoming vision board workshop. I gather all those things for you ahead of time. But most of my art classes. Um, you will be bringing your own paints and canvases, and I help you select those if you need to. And <clears throat> it's, it's usually a process of you come in, and then we first look at some art history, and look at, at what other people have done on a particular topic. Um, so, for example, this coming spring, I'm going to be doing a class on um, painting birds, beasts, and butterflies, so all animal and um, on another one we're going to do painting the tree of life so looking throughout I mean there's so many images of trees that have been creating since uh, created you know since our first sculptural uh, pieces that we have in our history that we can look to there's so many um, so we, we, we look to a specific topic for inspiration and um, and then we examine them, talk about why they're important, talk about the technique. I might share a demonstration of how to do a certain type of thing, and then you have a project of the day. So usually we're doing one small canvas. Um, there's a method called daily painting where you paint small and often to, to hone the skills. You boom, boom, boom. And, and so uh, one after another after another because it's with each one you you get into the rhythm of it. You get in, you learn with each, um, and they might be practice pieces, and you could cover them over and then start again. Um, I like to try to think about not being wasteful 
in the way we do them. Or um, another method that I teach, which is a new, very exciting movement, is called intuitive painting. Um, intuitive painting has its roots in art therapy. So you come in with that and it, um, rather, you, this is the one where you're going to do layer upon layer upon layer, 20 layers or more. <clears throat> with each layer, the intuitive painting instructor is prompting you by saying things like paint to the rhythm of the music that we're listening to, um, paint to express how you felt at 10 a.m. this morning or whatever. Um, so so th it's fun to come up with those prompts and people are surprised as they go throughout them and then they surprise themselves. Um, so they're surprised by me and then they're surprised by the method, uh, the, uh, what comes out of the method. Yeah. I am I am at a loss because I'm my, my brain is is filled with um, just the conceptualization of, okay. of what you just what you just put in there. So I, I'm I'm imagining how I would paint differently to rhythm if yes. I was going if I was um, concentrating on the rhythm of the brush stroke as opposed to the other aspects that I was attempting to create in the situation. Yes, yes, and um, part of that painting method, the intuitive painting method, is that you aren't planning. That's why we call it intuitive. Um, it's different from sitting down and saying, I want to make this painting about um, the Hudson River or whatever, and you're, you're formulating it all out and planning it all out ahead of time. It's a very different feeling from sitting down and just let getting into the flow and the groove and seeing what happens and then at the end you can look back on it and reflect well how, what does this show about me um, why did I create that why did I choose that stroke or that color or we'll look at those images and then maybe oh I see in that ink blot a bird or I see this well, why did you see that so it so it's using a lot of methods that um, therapists have used over the years to try to draw the inside world out and so we can understand the uh, unconscious mind that's simmering underneath uh, the conscious that we're more aware of. So tell folks again um, when your class is and how they can the, the When the next class that you're having where you provide materials? Where you provide materials. So that would be our New Year's vision board workshops, of which there's board. several of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, also starting in the month of January is going to be a unique new class that's um, creative art journaling. So you have a journal and you're working all within that journal and you're gathering um, materials. We're doing a lot of prompts from the surrealist movement, um, the, the folks who, who did both art and writing to bring out the unconscious mind I was just referring to. So that's going to be a fun class. Okay, so um, how did they sign up for the storyboard or this uh, journaling? Sure. Um, so you would go to my website, which is studioalchemy.art, and then under the gallery page, there's a list of the upcoming classes, and you register through Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. um, care to tell us a, a, a ballpark of prices, or do you want people to find out? <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, if it's just an afternoon workshop, those are... $29 a piece, but then uh, um, usually my other, my other classes are seven week classes and those are $196 um, for the whole session. Um, another thing that I have that's different um, than other things in town, that I have an open studio sessions, which are a fraction of the cost of what it um, is to take a regular art class. And it's essentially like a painting club for us, so we all gather together I help people as they're going through their projects, but there's not a curriculum. It's you're, we come together and support each other as we're working through our things and talk about them uh, in the process. And those happen on Thursday afternoons and Thursday evenings. Um, and um, so, 
And you can sign up for those as well. Yes. Are, are there descriptions on the website with yes. the classes? So mm -hmm. if people are like, okay, I wanted to sign up for that one thing, but I don't remember what she called it. So you can go through and, yes. and read them and decide which ones that you want to be a part of. Sure, sure. Or stop by on Friday and ask me any questions. <laughs> I'd be happy to I, answer. I, I encourage our, our, our listeners, um, especially here in the Indianapolis area, to go to Studio Alchemy this fr first Friday run. That's, um, I've, in, my, in the past, I have found myself with a long list of galleries I wanted to go see and then wind up only making it to like three of them. Oh, I know. Because the work is so, um, it enthralls you. You yeah. can, you can, so, so I suggest that you make, you make, make a, a short list of, of got, have to get to's, um, and, and then some alternatives. Oh, but yes. You can definitely get caught because, you know, there's my place, there's Studio Alchemy, but then there's the Circle City Industrial Complex we were talking about earlier, there's the Harrison Center, and any of those spots where they've got multiple artists, I, 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 I find my friends and then I start chatting with them about art and I, I, just, it, I don't get very far. And, but and you and can go out gone. every first Friday. You can go out every always, first Friday. Um, openings. And galleries are open, um, many of them are open on other days and times sure. that you could find mm -hmm. on their website. So mm -hmm. if you've made your list and, you know, does the um, Indiana Art Council still have um, First Friday announcements on a board on, on their website? Do they still do that? I don't, I don't know if, um, yeah, the, um, to where, so the, to where people in the public <laughs> can set, where they can go to make their list. Yes, I, th I, th I believe so. we used to have so. Nouveau, but yeah, we don't we have used Nouveau to anymore. Have, um, well, and it used to be a separate organization. Um, Joanna, who you're having on next, I think will probably know more about that than me. But, um, but uh, you, there's a lot of spaces that are open on First Friday, and you can tour them. You used to be able to get a little map, and that was so convenient. But you can go to the Arts Council site, and they do have things listed, and you can search all the events that are happening. Um, there's also, um, there's Do 317, so there are other sites that list these things as well. Excellent. So people have no excuse to not, <laughs> to not make their first Friday gathering in places where the artists are. And mm -hmm. especially if you like to look at art but never thought about doing it yourself, mm -hmm. just meeting the people who have chosen to do it for themselves, who are, mm -hmm. who find that place in themselves to express, it'll open up things inside of you if you're around the people who have that opening up in them. Mm, well said, Sue. Well said. Yeah. Well, I, I want a society, I want a society where, um, well, one, we pay artists. <laughs> I want a society that educates well-rounded citizens, mm. where we have the, the bottom line isn't about money per se, it's mm. about a quality of life where we can actually find that fulfillment, that, that pie in the sky kind of thing, like, you know, I'm not going to paint a masterpiece, but I can express myself. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. if, if we create a place where we encourage people to use every creative bone um, in their bodies to create a positive effect for our society, we mm. will be sustainable. Yes. Even even technology is art. True. It, the beauty of design. Yes. Yeah. And then now we have choices. We have so many choices that you know, my ancestors 200 years ago didn't have. Um, <clears throat> and we do want to be careful with those choices. And whether it's to select gifts for the holiday season that are things that are going to be really special to someone that they're going to cherish forever, or whether they're going to throw it away, 
<clears throat> or whether you want to give the gift of an experience, like doing an art class, or going out together and participating in things in a way that's <clears throat> bringing you together. It, it, so this yeah. first Friday is actually a unique one in, in terms of, it's, you can be Christmas shopping, it can be holiday shopping. This is true. Because are the works at your gallery for sale? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, see folks, if you see something you like on these walls when you're going to these galleries, um, you can invest in them. And I know by different artists and different mediums that the prices um, are different. Sure. Um, do you do prints as well? Because sometimes people do, you know, thousand dollar paintings and twenty dollar prints of, of said painting. Yeah. Um, is do you have similar things or? I will occasionally have prints, but most of what I have are the originals. Um, and we're really lucky here in Indianapolis in that our art market is so affordable. It really and truly is compared to yeah, even North Carolina, where my mom lives. It's it's phenomenal how much um, you you can get for your dollar here, um, and. Um, and we have a thriving art community where there's so much going on. So it's, it's a great combination for people if you want to collect art and you want to bring it into your home and have something that's really unique and that, that is going to enrich your life. So my challenge today for our Sustainable Action audience, your action is to make it to a First Friday gallery. Go see Studio Alchemy and Cottage Home. and. Do some Christmas shopping. Do some holiday shopping. Um, put someone else's feelings and emotions that touch you on your wall or um, a, as a present for someone else because it's the good and right thing with the universe. Addie, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Sue. It's lovely getting to know you. So this is Sue Spicer with Sustainable Action here on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. Thanks everyone for listening.